All right, let's do another type of problem talking about continuity. If you look at example three with me, it says find all values of x where the following piecewise function is discontinuous. So instead of just giving you one function and asking you about its discontinuity or continuity, this gives us three little pieces of three different functions. And if we were to put these three pieces together, we want to figure out if it's continuous. If I take the first piece and attach it to the second piece, and then take the second piece and attach it to the third piece, could I take my pencil and draw all the way through and trace it all the way through without lifting up my pencil? Well, let's go ahead and break this down into the three pieces and look a little more um, at what's happening at each of these three pieces. If you notice the first equation, if I broke it up, really is the equation f of x equals x plus 1, or y equals x plus 1. And as I'm looking at that equation, to me, that looks like an equation of a line, a y equals mx plus b. So I know that any line is continuous everywhere. But with a piecewise function, this is saying I don't want the whole line, I only want the piece where x is less than 1. So at some point, we want to cut off our line and we only want to look at the piece that's less than 1. Okay? And so we want to look at what's happening to the left of 1. Well, what we can do is actually use our limit ideas. We can take this function and we can figure out what's happening as x approaches 1 from the left of this x plus 1 graph. Well, we know how to do a limit problem, right? We did that in last section. If I give you a limit problem and ask you to figure out what the limit is, do you remember the first thing we always do? Yeah, we do our direct substitution. So I should be able to plug in a 1 into my equation, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So I know that there is a point at 1, 2. But now be careful. If you notice in my inequality, it doesn't say equal to, it just says less than. So if I were actually graphing this line, what would end up happening at that point is there would be an open circle and it would look something like this. It would be a line with an open circle at 1, 2. All right, let's look at the middle piece. The middle piece is an x squared minus 3x plus 4. To me, that looks like a quadratic, and I know that any quadratic is going to look like a parabola. I know because the uh, leading coefficient is a positive 1, it's going to be a parabola opening up. But I don't want the whole entire parabola. I only want the parabola where x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than or equal to 3. So I need to think about this parabola coming from the right of 1, but the left of 3. Let's use our limit ideas again. So I can look at this, thinking of the parabola, and I want it to be greater than or equal to 1. So I want to come up from the right side of 1 and evaluate this limit. But I also want to come up to 3, but I want to just be less than or equal to 3, so I want to come from the left of 3. So if you think about um, coming to the right of 1, and then coming to the, uh, of the left of 1, the right of 1, and coming to the left of 3. I can evaluate each of these limits by doing my direct substitution, and when I plug in a 1, I end up getting 2. When I plug in my 3, I end up getting 4. So if I were to go to graph this, Let's see if we can, so my graph is already there. I would have some sort of parabola. I would have a closed circle at 1, 2, so I know that my circle is up there at 2. I have some sort of parabola, and then when I plugged in 3, I was up at 4 with a closed circle. And I know they're closed circles because of my equal to sign. So this function again tells me it's a parabola. The equal to signs on my inequality tell me that they're closed circles. I know exactly where those closed circles are because as I come up to 1 and I plug in a 1, I'm up at 2. And as I come up to 3, I'm up at 4. So I know I'm at 1, 2 and 3, 4. So my graph looks something like this. So actually, what do you notice between the first piece, that line, and the parabola that we drew? You notice that that first piece was continuous, 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 but then remember there is the hole? But then as soon as I drew that parabola, the parabola actually had a solid dot where that hole was, and it filled up that hole, and then I can keep going. So, so far, isn't our function continuous everywhere? I can trace it, I can trace it, I can trace it, the hole's been filled in, and then I can continue tracing until here. Now we've got to look at our third piece. Our third piece is another line, it looks like, 
y equals 5 minus x. If you were to rewrite that so it looks more like an equation of a line, maybe you could write it like this. So I know that my y-intercept is 5 and my slope is negative 1. That line should be continuous everywhere. But we don't want to look everywhere. We only want to look at the part of the line where x is greater than 3. You notice that there is no equal to sign, so there's going to be a hole there. Let's figure out where that hole is at. Let's figure out what's happening as I approach this function from the right of 3. If I'm coming up to the right greater than 3, where am I going to approach as I get really close to 3? Well, let's do our limit process again. Let's plug in our 3, and 5 minus 3 is 2. So I know that there's going to be an open circle at 3, 2, just like I have in the picture. And then it's going to be some sort of a line that keeps going. Now if I take a step back and look at all of these pieces together, would you say that this piecewise function with all three pieces together is continuous everywhere? Or is there any places that have removable or non-removable discontinuity? Are there any holes, gaps, or vertical asymptote in the three pieces together? Well, as I trace, I notice that I'm continuous, continuous, continuous. The hole that I had at 1, 2 has been plugged up. I can continue graphing and following my line until I get to here, and that's a closed circle. But then look, don't I have to jump all the way down to 3, 2 before I can continue tracing? And so I notice that because these two limits, the limit from the left side of 3 and the limit from the right side of 3, are not the same limit, 1 goes to 4 and 1 goes to 2, I know that I have a big old gap in my equation that causes non-removable discontinuity right there at x equals 3. So now that I've put all three pieces together, I can discuss the continuity of this piecewise graph. I can say that there's non-removable discontinuity at x equals 3 because the limit from the left side of 3 is 4 and the limit from the right side of 3 is 2 and they are not close to being the same. We're not together. There's a big old gap there.